Good morning, guys, gals, and non-binary pals. I look how I feel. Kiddo has decided for the second day in a row to not go to sleep until past midnight, but also to wake up before 5 a.m. I don't know how he's doing it. I'm like putting maximum effort into not just passing out on the couch while he's running over me and jumping off of it. Like, I don't understand. I don't understand where, how, how, literally how is it possible? Oh, I have my meeting like any minute now. At least she hasn't called to cancel yet. So I'm assuming it's going on. Actually, I have a text. No, it's not from her. <laughs> um, Cause she has actually canceled the last two weeks in a row. So um, I guess it's finally happening today, which I figured um, cause she's not gonna let it go like a whole month before we talk again. So um, this is, by the way, a weekly meeting where it's meant to be a weekly meeting that I have with my son's um, uh, therapy supervisor where we discuss goals and like things moving forward and like different approaches we can take to X, Y, or Z. Um, but her schedule has been hectic because she's also basically the administrator of like the entire network of therapists. So, um, you know, it, it's not uncommon for things to get last minute canceled. But like I said, so far, it doesn't seem like that's gonna happen today. So my meeting's gonna start soon. I should probably get dressed because <laughs> I'm still in my pajamas. A um, couple things that are happening in this episode, kind of like a sneak peek situation. I have lab work tomorrow, or at least I think I do. I made the appointment two or three weeks ago, but I've not received confirmation of said appointment. Um, so I need to double check that at some point today that I actually do have an appointment because it would suck to show up only to be told who are you and why are you here. So I got to do that. Got to check on that so that I can ideally get the lab work done tomorrow morning. Um, I'm receiving a, or I'm supposed to, because again, my email says, oh, hey, heads up, it's arriving today. But when I check the UPS site, they're like, oh, a uh, tracking number has been created, but UPS hasn't even gotten the package from the seller. So we can't even tell you when it's coming to you because it depends on them. So whatever, supposedly today, I'm receiving uh, my first mystery box from Universal Standard. Um, I love Universal Standard, this is not sponsored, but I wish. <laughs> but Universal, so Universal Standard, in case you don't know, they sell basics. Um, they sell tops, bottoms, dresses, uh, jumpers, etc. No patterns or anything, it's literally all just like solid color, but um, it's super high quality fabrics. The idea being that if you buy from them, yes, it's going to be more expensive, but the longevity you're going to get out of each piece makes it worth it. And it also makes it so that you don't have to just be in the whole like fast fashion cycle, which is terrible for the environment. Um, the people that make these things do not get paid properly. So yes, it's more money per piece, but you're getting all of these benefits, right? And I've had three shirts from Universal Standard that I've gotten on like super, super, super sale because a t-shirt from there is typically like 50 bucks. And I've found codes, etc., where I've been able to get t-shirts for $11. And I can confirm that the quality is fantastic. So they were doing a sale last week where they would send you two mystery items, um, they made it seem like it would be a top and a bottom, but I honestly don't know. For all I know, I'll, I'll receive two bottoms or two tops or who knows uh, for like 80% off. So I thought it would be fun. I had a little bit of extra cash. I said, let's see what happens. And um, at that price, that's probably the best I'm going to get for Universal Standard anything. So that's supposed to arrive today. I'm also supposed to receive mold tests in the mail today. <clears throat> because we recently learned that there was a water heater explosion here before we moved in at some point. And so walls were damaged, um, et cetera, et cetera. And one of the main reasons we moved out of my parents' house is because they have a mold problem. Moving in here thinking that's obviously not the case here, um, but no, apparently, potentially it is. So I got four different mold kits 
so that we can put one in each bathroom because the bathrooms have zero ventilation, zero windows, nothing. I take super hot scalding showers and kiddo likes to take hour long, two hour long baths. So steam, vapor kind of like gets up in the walls and obviously we leave doors open when we're done so that it has a chance to air out. But it still means that there's between 15 minutes and two hours at a time on any given day where our walls are just being saturated with heat and moisture. So like I said, I got one for each bathroom. I got one for the laundry room slash utility closet because supposedly that's where if there's damage from the water heater situation, it would have been there. And then I just got one for like the living room common area of the house. I probably overdid it because for the amount of square footage we have, we probably don't need that many tests, but I wanted to make sure I was super, super thorough. Um, and the way that the tests work is that it's basically a Petri dish and you leave it out. And if nothing collects, then you're good. But if something does collect, if something does grow in the Petri dish, then you have to pay an extra 40 bucks because each test is $10 you can pay an extra 40 bucks and send that dish into their lab and they'll tell you exactly what it is that you have in your house. So I'm not looking forward to the added expense. Ideally, these 40 bucks that I initially invested will be it, you know, the $10 for the four tests and all of them will come back completely clean and that's where it ends. Um, but if they don't, <laughs> then I guess I'll bring you guys along on whatever that journey entails. So, yeah, I gotta get going, I gotta get dressed. It's a very long, lengthy uh, intro. Oh my gosh, I can't even think, I'm so tired. Um, but yeah, I'll pop back in in a minute, probably let you guys know what's going on. So happy, happy Thursday. <laughs> so I told y'all in the last episode that I made a carrot souffle, but I hadn't showed it to you guys. So obviously it's already been dug into. I just made a tiny one and I have the amount of sugar for the recipe and I gotta say texture is still perfect flavor is still perfect I do not miss that extra half cup of sugar at all so I think that from now on this is just how I'm gonna make it uh, I do have the recipe for this on the channel so I'll post the video in the corner up here so amazing if you've never had this I've heard it compared to the kind that you used to be able to get at Piccadilly. I've never had the kind at Piccadilly. This is just a family recipe as far as I know, but it's amazing, especially straight from the fridge. Oh my gosh. I strike again. I have a problem for sure. Like I, hi, I'm Desiree and I hoard boxes. I am sure that I will find a way to use them. I am sure that I will regret getting rid of them. A good box, <laughs> it's so versatile, right? So I, I hold on to boxes for way longer than I need to and they're just all over the place. Explain to me why I need to keep a shoe box and the box it came in. For two weeks it's been in my house. I'm no closer to figuring out what to do with it. It's, it's trash. It's literal trash. If I need a box for anything, boxes are not hard to come by. I can just get another box. So I'm throwing this out. I'm gonna force myself to part with it. Look at this amazing thing. I might have a soda once every like couple of weeks, but my husband surprised me with one of these yesterday and I decided to wait until today to have it. Oh man, that's cutting it close right there. But look at this, how fun. It's a 16 ounce can. It's a little, little tall boy <laughs> of cherry Coke. I love it. All right, pals, I'm gonna take a break from partaking of my carbonated sugar syrup to say hi, good morning, happy Friday. Is it still morning? No, it's officially past 12, so it is not morning. Um, so this morning I had my lab work. First of all, um, packed waiting room, only one other person besides me was masked in that entire waiting room. Luckily all of the lab staff were masked, um, but it was still very, anxiety producing to um to have to sit in that room for 10 minutes with everybody just blah. um as far as i could tell i mean nobody obviously any one of them could be sick and i wouldn't know but there was no like obvious <laughs> going on so that makes me feel a tiny bit better again it doesn't really actually mean anything but i'd rather fixate on that than the alternative where I'm gonna spend the next week going, oh my gosh, and there was somebody in the room going, Ugh. 
So there's that. Um, once they brought me in, it was super, super quick, <laughs> except for the actual like dr blood drawing. I was connected to the thing for like two entire minutes. It was seven vials of blood that they took from me. Uh, but the tech I got, I didn't even realize that she'd stuck me. Like it happened so quick and so painlessly. So 10 out of 10 right there. And yeah, the whole ordeal from leaving the house to getting back home took an hour. So that was great. Um, everybody's had breakfast, obviously. We've already had our first therapy of the day. And I had breakfast. Like, don't think that I got home from fasting blood work and decided to slam a cherry Coke. I had breakfast when I got home. And now I should be having a nice nutritious snack between therapies, but instead I'm having soda. And uh, yeah, I've got to clean up in here because we're about to have physical therapy and there's garbage, not garbage, there's books, but there's stuff all over the floor that should not be here because kiddo has to be doing jumping jacks and bird dogs and push-ups in a second and he can't do them on a pile of books. So I've got to deal with that. But um, yeah, oh, I just did this and I hurt myself. So I'll tell you, oh, you can actually see it on camera. Look at that, how crazy. Yesterday morning, I wasn't gonna say anything about it because I didn't wanna make a big deal. But yesterday morning, I woke up with pain right here on my left, like not quite my temple, but like right along my hairline. And I looked in the mirror and I had a hole. Like it looked like I'd run into the corner of something or I would have remembered that though, right? But I had, the point is I had a hole on the side of my head and I was like, that is so weird. And it was like this burning, throbbing, stinging pain. So I took a picture of it at like 8.30 in the morning. I sent it to my husband. Cause like, hey, this is weird, right? That I woke up with this. And three hours later, it was huge. I had a giant bump on the side of my head. And again, just this stinging, throbbing, burning pain. And I kept telling myself, it has to be a pimple, but like, Damn, maybe it's just because I haven't paid attention ever before, but that pimple grew fast. Like, that's really weird. And so I took <laughs> another picture of it and I sent it to my husband and he was like, that's scary, we should go to the doctor. I'm like, no, no, it's, I'm sure it's just a pimple. I'm sure it's fine, it's no big deal. I just thought it was crazy, right? Like, cause I just showed it to you this morning and it was like this and now it's like this. And um, I just kept on with that pain all day. I talked to my sister about it and she was like, that might be a spider bite. And we had an aunt almost lose her arm to a spider bite. So that was a little scary to hear about. Um, but I thought, no, spider, I would have noticed a spider bite, right? Like, wouldn't I have realized, hey, I just got bit by a spider? Now that I'm thinking about it, if it happened in my, in my sleep, probably not, or who knows. Um, but I kept monitoring it throughout the day. I used warm compresses, I used ice nothing really helped and um i kept considering maybe i should go to the hospital in case it's a spider bite but the last thing i wanted was to expose myself to germs to hospital germs only to be told my guy are you serious you have a zit go home um <laughs> so i stayed home and this morning it has gone down a lot when my husband got home from work and he saw it with his own eyes he went oh no the pictures and the video don't do it justice. Like, have you looked at yourself? Because it was really, really big. And he was freaking out. He was the one telling me, you really need to go to the hospital. And I, you know, obviously I didn't do that. Um, but yeah, this morning it is, as you can see, still noticeable, but it's much smaller than it was yesterday. And today, now that it's gone down in the swelling, you can see that there's like a little hole just off center. So it, it definitely is a bite. A bite of what? I don't know. Like, is it a spider? Is it something else? I don't know. But um, whatever it is, I survived the first 24 hours of it. So I'm sure I'm going to be fine. But that's a little scary that like, where did it come from? Why did it happen? I know I live next to a literal swamp, but I've never seen spiders in here. Um, and if they're in our bedroom, like coming in, because our bed is right under the bedroom window. So if that's happening, we probably need to do something about that. But um, it still hurts today, but only when I touch it. Not like yesterday. Yesterday it was that throbbing, stinging pain all day long. And it was intense and like, I, it was unignorable. Like it was affecting my day. Whereas today I'm pretty much forgetting it's there unless I graze it. But um, yeah, that's, that's exciting, right? That's something that's happening. So there you go. I really have talked for a long time now. I gotta get going. 
happy Friday. Happy Friday. Okay, I, I don't have time to be talking to y'all right now because we have therapy like in 10 minutes and I still haven't picked up in here. But something unbelievable just happened. Um, like literally unbelievable. My mom told me it happened and I replied to her, unbelievable. <laughs> I've been getting texts all morning from FedEx saying, hey, your package is on the way. And I'm here thinking, I didn't order anything, but who knows, right? Possibly I did and I forgot, something was back ordered. I have no idea, I guess I'll wait and see. And my mom just sent me a text right now saying, you just got a package from Philips I'm pretty sure your new CPAP is here. And I replied, unbelievable. And I go to check my email and six minutes ago, so basically the email arrived at the same time as the package, I got an email from Philip saying, hey, here's your tracking number, your new CPAP has shipped. So it didn't come here, it went to my parents' house because the CPAP has been recalled for almost two entire years and when I had to register that hey I have a defective device I need a replacement we were still living with my parents so the FedEx number that I've been tracking all morning was not meant to come here it went over there but the point is that after almost two entire years I have a new CPAP it actually happened it's in it's not in my possession like not physically here but it's at my parents house it exists. It's no longer an idea that will potentially one day maybe happen. It's actually arrived. So I'm very, very, very excited. Super excited. For today's decluttering, it pains me to say it because I've had this plan for like two years, but I think it's safe to say, ugh, it's Dunsky. It's actually been unearthed. Um, this green here kind of makes me feel like it could be salvaged, but I'd have to get rid of all of this dead stuff and probably repot it to a smaller pot. So <laughs> I guess I'll do that. I'll get rid of all this leafery and put this in a smaller pot at some point in the weekend. Um, what else? What else can I do here? Well, the good news is that this big old pot, I can put my avocado plant in here, which is very close to outgrowing its original home. So that'll be nice. But yeah, this all this is gone for today. And uh, well, I guess technically this as well. So sad. And you know what? While we're out here, we'll count this as a Sunday's decluttering. I'm going to throw out this onion plant that I had in here as well. It was something that I just decided to grow on a whim and it did pretty well for a minute, but then suddenly it just died. So, oh well. Hello friends. Happy Saturday afternoon. It's one o'clock. So, wanted to come in and say hi. Obviously my hair is a mess. I still have the bed head going on from last night, but we will ignore it. Um, so, a couple things. Basically, this part of the video is becoming like a mail haul. So, hopefully, you guys are down for that. I'm pretty sure I mentioned the mold testing kits that I'd ordered. They arrived, but I've not opened them yet. And I honestly don't foresee doing them this weekend. So whenever I get around to doing them, I'll let you all know, but that's not happening just yet. However, what I did get yesterday, -na 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 -na, my new CPAP, which is a very different design than the one I currently use, it's tiny. Um, and it just brought this, obviously the power cable as well. It brought a new tube, but it did not bring a new mask, which is a shame because the mask I have is very broken and I was looking forward to a replacement, but I guess that's not what was recalled, so that's on me. So I just have to go out and buy a new mask, which is gonna be like $100, whatever. It has to get done. Something else, what else? Oh, the Universal Standard package that I'm pretty sure I told y'all about earlier in the video, it was meant to arrive on Friday, but on Friday, I got a notification that it was just then shipped. So actually, it's not arriving until March 3rd at the earliest, which sucks because I was really looking forward to it. It is what it is. Something else I received, though, and I'm positive now that it has to have been a return because the box is trashed. I can't resist a fitness gimmick. <laughs> like, if I'd been of age when the Thigh Master came out, I probably would have bought one. Um, 
yeah, this has to have been a return. This, a return rather, because this looks used to me. So I don't know if I'm gonna end up keeping this. But I got one of those, let me see if I can even open it. Those hula hoop things that everybody sees on TikTok and whatnot. You literally just like attach this to your waist and it's like a skip it, but for your midsection instead of for your ankle. If you don't know what a skip it is, then we're obviously not of the same generation. Um, but yeah, you're just supposed to ooh and hula hoop and supposedly it's a, it's a workout thing. So I guess I'll see if I can put it together. It was on like flash, like Amazon flash sale. So it was like 60% off. And that's the only reason I went for it. But yeah, this is like in bits. So it really does look like it was somebody's return. And I don't know if I'm down for that. So, but yeah, that arrived as well. Oh, we've spent all evening and all morning watching Drive to Survive and watching New Amsterdam. And I'm only just now getting up and like starting to do things for the day. Um, but probably I'm gonna end up moving a lot of the things on my to-do list to some other time so that I can continue to watch New Amsterdam and Drive to Survive today. But yeah, that's what's going on so far. At some point I'll try to put this thing together and I gotta clean the CPAP and get it ready so that I could potentially use it tonight for the first time. So yeah, that's what's going on. Happy Saturday. Hey friends, it's Sunday morning and just barely <laughs> and I wanted to give you guys an update on the new hey. CPAP. Um, it's tiny. I'll show it to you in a minute or later I suppose because we're getting ready now to leave to my parents house, but um, it's a lot smaller than the unit that I'm used to but it works very very well. Um, it's extremely quiet. The only issue that I'm having is the same issue that I had with the old one which is that the hose gets flooded overnight. So pretty much the way that it works is that it's a, there's a humidifier. It warms that water to make it steamy, like vapor, and the vapor travels up the tube and into the mask so that as it's pushing all this air that you need down, you know, down your nose and down your throat and everything, that humidity makes it so that your throat and stuff doesn't dry out because that's super uncomfortable. Imagine the entire time you're sleeping, you're getting air forced down into your your pipes you know that's extremely drying and it makes it it makes you feel extremely uncomfortable not just while you're sleeping but then all the next day so the humidifier for me anyways is necessary but what happens is that if the room is too cold and we do sleep with the room very very cold that water can condense again so it goes from water to vapor but then from vapor back to water in the tube before it gets to my system and eventually so much water builds up in there that you start to hear it knocking around back and forth. And it's super, super loud. It wakes up everybody that you're sleeping in the room with, <laughs> um, as my husband can attest. And um, there's not a whole lot you can do about it except multiple times a night, take the tube off your mask and like whip it around in the air so that as much water as is possible at that moment is forced out of the tube. And if you're lucky, that will work and you can keep sleeping. More often than not, it doesn't work and I just end up going to the couch to finish sleeping if I'm able without my mask, which is not okay, um, because it's just impossible to continue sleeping through the noise. And this mask does the same thing. So that's not to do, or this machine is the same thing rather, but that's not to do with the machine per se. It might be to do with like, I might need a, a fatter tube basically so that it's not as affected by the cold. There's not as much surface. Um, I don't know. That's a matter of like experimentation and out of pocket, right? Because that's not their problem. Their problem was our machine is defective. Here's a new one. And they did that. But if I could describe the noise as anything, like, to make it like really, so you guys understand really what this, this sound is like when you're trying to sleep. Imagine there's a heavy rainstorm and you hear those heavy raindrops pattering on your window. Now imagine you're the window. 
<laughs> that's what it feels like. It's a it's a sound that's like it it resonates into your whole system. It's so freaking loud and inescapable. And all you want to do is sleep, and it's the last thing you're able to do when that happens. And unfortunately for me, it happens most nights, multiple times a night. So whatever. Uh, the point is that it worked. So. I'm gonna end up having to toss, actually, I guess that'll be the thing today. I'll toss the box, etc. that'll be what I declutter. Because <laughs> I was gonna keep the box in case I had to return it, but it seems like so far so good. Unless I find out later there's another recall and then we're gonna start this mess all over again, but nothing to be done about that right now. So, um, I still haven't put the hula thing together yet because I'm intimidated, honestly. There's so many pieces and I'll get to it eventually. But yeah, right now, we've already kind of gotten the house ready so that we can get going. All that's left to do is I need to get dressed and I need to get the kiddo dressed. But we're going to head out to my parents' house now to have a bunch of stuff that I need to do when I get back. And so, yeah, plus my mom has been texting me since like 10 in the morning. Hey, lunch is ready. I was literally asleep until like 10.30. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, so I guess we're going over there to have lunch now. But that's what's going on for now and I will try to pop back in as soon as I'm able to show you what else is going on. So happy Sunday. That does it for this magazine this is gonna be my item of the day i went through it picked out the recipes i really liked which ended up being only three so <laughs> i'm gonna put those three in my to try binder and the whole magazine now can go in the trash it's a small thing but one a day this is gonna add up hey friends it's monday morning and i once again forgot to do an outro last night i'm gonna wrap up this episode right now um so we went to my parents' house and on the way there, something, see, I don't know what the heck's going on, but um, so this week, to the, yesterday, right? I was gonna say today, but it's actually yesterday because today is Monday. When we were on our way to my parents' house, right in front of us, we didn't actually see the accident happen, but it was maybe like four or five car lengths away from us. Um, suddenly everybody just stopped and we're like, what the heck is going on? It's just a two lane street this way, two lane this way. It's a tiny street, residential area. Um, you're not supposed to be going over 50 or over 50. You're not supposed to be going over 30 in that area. And, but suddenly everybody just stopped and we're like, that's weird. And we look over and it's that there is an SUV on its side, on the sidewalk basically. And that literally had just happened. Like that's why everybody stopped short in that moment is because the car just rolled right then at that moment um and immediately everybody that stopped in front of us ran out of their cars and ran over to the suv to try to push it back over which by the way guys you're not supposed to do that i don't claim to be i'm terrible in an emergency except for when it comes to my kid if my kid is having some sort of an emergency i can zone in focus get things handled and i'll fall apart later typically in any other scenario like when there's something going on you can't rely on me. I will freak the f out and I will just sit in a corner and cry until somebody else comes. Um, I say that I don't give myself enough credit, whatever. The point is, is that I can understand why in a situation like that you'd panic and just act instead of considering like what actually is the best course of action. If you see a car flipped over like that, break the windshield to get the person out. Um, don't try to flip the car back over. Not only are you gonna potentially hurt yourself trying to flip the car over, but when you flip the car back over, you're jostling everybody in that car again. You might um, convince the car, hey, you didn't blow up the first time, why don't you blow up now? Like there's all sorts of things that can go wrong. So in case you're ever in a situation like that, don't try to flip the car back over unless that's like literally the only way you could get the person out. Try your best to break a window, break a windshield and try to get them out that way. Have them cover their face, break the windshield, etc. Um, the lady in the SUV seemed fine. Like she was sitting upright of her own accord. She just seemed like an old, not old lady, but an older lady that probably wouldn't have been able to stand straight up and like, 
come out of the top of the SUV. So that's why everybody was trying to roll the car over. We didn't stay to help. Help was already on the way. Um, I completely fell apart anyways, just because that has to be so scary. But what I'm finding, not only was that, like obviously not something you usually see every day, right? But what's interesting is that that happened this weekend. Last weekend, my mom came over to our house instead, which never happens. But then the weekend prior, we went over there as usual. And that's when my parents were like, hey, let's go to the fish place and, and buy some new pet fish. And on the way to the fish place, we witnessed an accident where some guy turned left when he wasn't supposed to. And the person that was going straight, which he had the right of way, there was no time for him to stop because of how quickly this guy jumped in front of him. So he ended up T-boning him and like flipping that car into a parking lot, which the only thing that stopped him rolling was hitting other cars. And again, it's just two weeks in a row, if you don't count last week, because last week we didn't go anywhere, but that's two weeks in a row that when we're with my parents or on the way to my parents or whatever, we witness a car accident right before our eyes. And it's like, that's a little much. Is the universe trying to tell me something? I don't like it, whatever it is. T too much um, action adventure in real life happening for me at once. Um, luckily, in all cases, everybody seems to have been fine because the local news really loves sensationalizing and reporting on things like that when they go badly. And we didn't see anything on the news either time, like either weekend. So it is assumed that everybody was relatively unscathed, all things considered. Um, but yeah, but that's just a little too much realness for me. So anyway, um, <laughs> that's what's gone on this past weekend. I should wrap this up because I gotta get going on the next episode and get us ready for, well, Monday. So um, yeah, let me know what you guys did this past weekend and how your week is shaping up so far. Oh, my throat hurts already. I haven't even really been talking that long. I wanna thank you all so much. This is such a weird way to end this video. I wanna thank you so much for being here and watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, I hope you'll please give it a big thumbs up. I'd also love it if you'd subscribe and click that notification bell because I post at least three times a week and I wouldn't want you to miss a minute. Thanks so much again for watching. Bye.